Sir Alex Ferguson, one of the greatest managers ever in the world of football. He's best known for his years with Manchester United, culminating with the Red Devils triumph in the 1999 UEFA Champions League. He won 38 major trophies in his 27 reign at Old Trafford, achieving 13 Premier League titles, 5 FA Cups, 4 League Cups, 10 Community Shields, 2 Champions Leagues, a European Cup Winners' Cup, a European Super Cup, an Intercontinental Cup and one FIFA Club World Cup. However, while many will argue that the evening in 1999 was Ferguson's crowning achievement, try telling that to the people of Aberdeen. After all, it was Aberdeen that the legendary Scotsman first made a name for himself on the European stage, winning the 1983 UEFA Cup Winners Cup and putting the Dons back on the map by ending Celtic and Rangers dominance north of the border. In this video, we will tell the story of how the great Sir Alex Ferguson defied the odds and dominated Europe with Aberdeen. In June 1978, the Aberdeen board made an unlikely appointment, Alex Ferguson. He took over from Billy McNeil, who had left to manage Celtic after only one season with Aberdeen. Despite being a major Scottish club, Aberdeen had only clinched the league title once in their history, back in 1955 under Dave Halliday. Ferguson was a young manager at the time, only four years into his managerial career. He was barely older than some of the players, which made it difficult for him to gain the respect of the older squad members, particularly striker Joe Harper. However, the squad Ferguson inherited had been performing well, having not lost a league match since the previous December and finishing second in the league in the previous season. Set against this benchmark, Ferguson's first season at Aberdeen was not as successful as he might have hoped. The club reached the semi-final of the Scottish Cup and the final of the Scottish League Cup, losing 2-1 to Rangers and ended up finishing fourth in the league. Ferguson later admitted his mind was not fully focused on the task at hand, rather he was preoccupied with his father's lung cancer battle and ongoing legal disputes over his departure from St Mirren. Despite these early challenges, Ferguson was undeterred. He began to mould the squad into his liking, instilling his discipline and hard work and ethos into the club. He reshaped his team, letting go of players he felt wouldn't contribute to his vision while actively scouting and recruiting talents that he believed would be pivotal in achieving his objectives. The signings of Gordon Strachan, Willie Miller and Alex McLeish not only strengthened the team but also brought an exciting brand of football. Aberdeen started the 1979-80 season on shaky grounds, but their form underwent a dramatic improvement as the year turned. Another League Cup final came in December, this time against Dundee United, but yet again, the Dons threw up the final hurdle with a thumping 3-0 defeat in a replay. Ferguson later accepted responsibility for the disappointment, saying that he should have changed his personnel after the initial 0-0 stalemate. It was in the second half of the campaign that his team finally began and to hit some consistent form. The revival culminated in a spectacular 5-0 victory on the final day of the season, securing their first league title in 25 years. This achievement was significant not just for Aberdeen, but for Scottish football as a whole, as it marked the first time in 15 years that the league had not been won by either Rangers or Celtic. This title win served as a turning point in Ferguson's relationship with his players. They finally seemed to fully believe in their manager, with Ferguson later reflecting, that was the achievement which united us. I finally had the players believing in me. Ferguson's strict discipline and fiery demeanour earned him the nickname Furious Fergie amongst his players. His tough love approach included finding striker John Hewitt for overtaking him on a public road and kicking a tea urn at the players at half time after a poor first half. However, this strict demeanour was part of his strategy to create a hardened, motivated team capable of challenging the status quo of Scottish football. Ferguson further enhanced a fighting spirit within the club by creating a siege mentality. He accused the Scottish media of being biased towards the Glasgow clubs, using this to fuel the team's determination and unite them against a common enemy. This mentality paid dividends, with Aberdeen continuing their success with a Scottish Cup win in 1982, resulting in them qualifying for Europe in 1982-83 season. Despite this success, Ferguson was far from satisfied. 
He declined an offer to manage Wolves, stating that the club was in trouble and that his ambitions at Aberdeen were not even half fulfilled. The determination to take Aberdeen further was evident. Little did anyone know that the best was yet to come. Ferguson's rise to European prominence began in earnest during the 1982-83 season with Aberdeen's campaign in the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. Aberdeen's campaign started relatively smoothly, overcoming Swiss side Sion in a two-legged tie 11-1 on aggregate. After overcoming Albanian side FK Dynamo Triana in the first round, and then Polish outfit Lech Poznan in the second, Aberdeen all of a sudden were into the last eight and preparing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bayern Munich. Karl Heinz Ramanegi was one of the stars who populated the Bayern Munich team, which was largely made up of players who had helped the national side finish as runners up in the World Cup the preceding summer. A goalish draw in Germany pleased many, but Ferguson was dissatisfied with the scoreline. He later said of that match, when we drew 0-0 over there, I was the only one who was unhappy because I thought we needed an away goal and should have got one. In the second leg, having gone 2-1 down in the 61st minute, two quick fire goals left the visitors firmly defeated. Aberdeen had eliminated one of the tournament's favourites. The 3-2 victory set up a semi-final tie with Belgian side Watershed Thor, who actually ceased to exist just five years later. Aberdeen won the first leg 5-1, winning 5-2 in aggregate and cementing their place in the final. The stage was set for the final in Gothenburg, Sweden, against the Spanish giants Real Madrid. In the bitter cold and torrential rain, Aberdeen put on a performance for the ages. After taking an early lead through Eric Black, the Scots conceded a penalty after a mistake by Alex McLeish. It was converted by Juanito, and the score will remain 1-1 for the remainder of regulation time. It was an edgy 90 minutes, but most onlookers believed Aberdeen were firmly the better side. It was John Hewitt who secured a historic win in the second half of extra time on the 112th minute to deliver one of the most famous ever triumphs by a Scottish team. Fergus's men had done it on the grandest stage, making Aberdeen the third Scottish club to win a European trophy. Ferguson's time at Aberdeen was not just about trophies though, it was about transforming a club that had been in the shadows for far too long into a genuine force in European football. His influence extended beyond the trophies he won, he changed the mindset of an entire city, he made people believe that it was possible to compete with the best and he gave them a team that did just that. Bergson laid a blueprint for success that has not been replicated since his eight years at the helm. His departure from Aberdeen to Manchester United in 1986 marked the end of an era. Ferguson was the leading candidate for the Old Trafford job after Ron Ackerson failed to restore Manchester United's glory years. He remarked after accepting the job at the English club that he couldn't possibly have turned it down. It has now been decades since Aberdeen won a league championship. The title in 1985 also marked the last time it did not go to one of the Glasgow teams. Ferguson's tenure at Aberdeen, marked by domestic dominance and European glory, is a testament to his ability to take on the biggest of challenges and emerge victorious. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time.